Now you may or may not know that the Unreal Engine 4 and Unity can both generate light maps for you and collision for you automatically. Now in the case of light maps, like we studied in the last video, Unreal Engine 4 is actually really good, the algorithm is really good at generating light maps for you, and about 99% of the time it can do that properly. But knowing how to do it does teach us exactly why and how specific things happen with our light maps so that we can understand how we can change our model to fix that. As far as collision goes, there are a ton of scenarios where you're going to need to create your own collision so that you have more control over how the collision is. So let's get started and figure out how to do this. One of the most important things to know about creating your own collision boxes is that when you're creating the mesh for the collision box in an external software like Blender, one thing you can't do is what we see here in this third object, okay? When you have these inward sloping faces, okay, the engine that you're using, it doesn't matter what it is, for collision will not be able to understand that, all right? And it is just not acceptable to the program and it won't create this collision. So if you were actually to bring this collision box into Unreal Engine 4, it would go ahead and turn it into this collision box, okay? And so anything that has proper form to it and doesn't have any inward sloping faces into the actual shape itself will be accepted by the engine. If it does have inward sloping faces, it will correct that for you when you bring your object into the game engine. Taking into account what we know about inward sloping faces and collision boxes, by looking at this tree, we can determine that we're going to need three different collision boxes to handle this. Okay, and like I said before, the reason is because if we're going to draw our collision around this upper area and then come down here to this branch area and then down to the trunk, we would have inward sloping faces here and here and also here as well as there. Okay, and so that wouldn't be acceptable by the engine. So what it would do is just go ahead and draw our collision from the outside of this canopy here down to the bottom of the trunk of the tree. So now let's get started on creating our collision boxes. So the first thing we wanna do is Shift C to make sure we're centered there. And we're gonna go Shift A and add a new mesh. And we're gonna say a cube. And we're gonna scale this cube down you may have to play with the sizing of this a bit depending on how your characters are set up and how they collide with the tree based on the bone structure and stuff like that. But general rule of thumb is that you just want to kind of, you know, have it slightly bigger than the tree. Okay, so that when your character does collide with it, if you have a third person game or something like that, you don't actually see the character's arm going through the tree or part of his chest or head going through the tree because that can be kind of ugly. So you just go a little bit bigger. Um, and if you have to fix that later, then that's something you can easily fix. Alright, so we're just going to bring this box up to the base of the tree here, slightly below it. We're going to tab into edit mode, and control tab, select faces, and grab the top face. Now we we'll just hit GZ to bring that up to about here. And even though we need to have a separate box for this area here, we're just going to keep working from this one, and then we can separate them later. So we'll just hit E and extrude that up and bring it to about there and we're just going to scale it out with this. Alright, now we're going to press Z to go into mesh mode so we can actually get a look at what we're doing here. And we see that, you know, some parts of it are a little bit closer to the side and then some areas like over here are a little bit farther. We can choose to perfect this or not. That's really up to you as the developer of your own game. But I choose to. So I'm going to press G and Z and bring that over a little scale it down and or I'm sorry G and X and G and X to bring it back and right about there looks good enough to me and actually we can scale it down just a hair more and G and Y right there alright now while I'm in the mesh view I'm just gonna A to unselect everything and B grab this whole upper area press P and that'll let me separate by selection is what I want to choose and now I have a separate object, so I can just tab out of this and press Z so that I can actually see everything. I'm just going to grab this lower box here and press G then Z to bring it down. And I will tab back in, control tab to edge and right, or alt right click and select that whole edge there. Press F to fill it with a face. Tab out, tab into this one, alt right click, F to fill that with a face. Then I'll just select this lower box while in object mode and bring it back up. 
All right, and that pretty much takes care of the branches in our trunk. Now we have to handle the canopy of the tree. So for the canopy, we'll just start with another cube. We'll just shift A, mesh, create a cube, and G and Z to bring it up into the center here and scale it out. Just rearrange that a little bit more, G and Z, and bring it back down a hair, scale it out. Okay, now we can tab into this and hit Control R, and that allows us to create loop cuts. Okay, so loop cuts will go all the way around the object. As long as you don't have a triangle breaking somewhere that would break your loop essentially. As long as you're working in quads, you can pretty much always use a loop cut. And we're just going to use our scroll wheel, and with our scroll wheel we can determine how many loops we want. So we really only want two here. So we'll left click, and that allows us to lock in how many loops we have, and right click will drop it right in the center. Okay, And we're going to go S and X to scale that out, bring it to about there. And then we'll come over here, control R, scroll wheel up to get two, left click, that allows us to set it, and right click to put it in the center. And again, we'll scale this along the Y axis, so S and Y, bring it out. And now we want to use our knife tool to cut out these external faces here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to hit K for knife, and it shows us where we've selected by giving us that little red square there. So we click on that, and then we'll bring it over here and click on this other vertice, and then hit enter to lock that in. And we're just going to do that all the way around the top, like so. Using K, here to here, enter, K, and here to here. All right. And now we're just going to run a loop cut around the center, so control R, and put our loop here, allows us to set it, and then right click to put it to center. And we're going to press Z to go into mesh, and control tab, and choose faces. Then B, and select the whole lower portion, and we're just going to delete all those faces by hitting delete and then choosing faces. Now, we can tab out and make sure we have our object selected, which is our canopy collision box and we're just going to go to our modifiers and we're going to tell it to do a mirror along the Z axis and get rid of the X. Okay, making sure that we also have merge selected so that merges together. We apply that and we're going to tab back in and now we have those cuts that we put across the top on the bottom without having to go and knife all those. Now we're going to hit Z to come back out so we can see everything nice and easy. And we're just gonna press C so that we can quickly select these faces. And note that when you're using C to select with, you actually have to use right click to exit out of it, okay? If you use the center wheel click to move around, it'll actually unselect what you've selected, like that. So we just right click out of it, press C again, and using our middle one to unselect what we didn't mean to select, our middle mouse, like that. And we have everything selected, we're just going to hit delete and delete faces. Now we can control tab, select edge, and alt, right click that whole loop there, and press F to fill these faces, like so, by pressing F to fill. And we're going to change back to edge, and we're just going to right click all these edges, shift right click them. And hopefully I got that one I did. And we're just going to hit delete and dissolve edges to get rid of those. All right, and now we're going to actually add that back. All right, and that's a little bit quicker than actually doing, uh, you know, a knife from there to there to correct all those separations. And we'll just hit A to unselect. Now we'll hit control tab and choose faces. We'll just grab this top center face and hit G and Z to bring that up just above the top of the tree there. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom one, G and Z to bring it down, just underneath the tree. We're going to control tab, get our edges, and we're going to use alt right click to grab that whole loop. Okay, and we will use G and Z to bring it down and scale it out with S, like so. And then we'll hit Z to see our wireframe mode, and we see that you know, one, one direction of the tree is actually thicker than the other, so we're going to have to fix this. So we can hit Control tab grab our faces, and I like to, when I'm grabbing faces, to just get out of mesh mode because it 
can be a bit confusing. And then we're just going to hit S to scale and go along the Y. We'll bring that in to about there. And we'll check that out. A to unselect so we can see what we're doing. And that looks pretty good to me. So let's press Z so we can see everything and we'll tab out of it to see all the objects. And so now what we have here is we have this tree on the inside. As you can see, it's coming a little bit out of the collision box. And the reason we don't really care about that is because it's not going to really cause an issue when we're coming in contact with this tree. Okay, there is uh, a proper amount of collision here keeping you off of this tree. And ultimately the goal with creating collision boxes is, is to keep the collision boxes as simple as possible. Okay, because if you're not going to do that, you might as well just use complex collision on your object in the game. And you really don't want to do that because the more faces that you have on your collision box, the more it's going to hinder the performance of your game. Okay, and especially on things like trees, if you have an insane amount of vertices on, on your trees and they're all over the map, then that's really going to hinder performance. Okay, so it's important that your collision boxes are as simple as possible. Now we get into the naming convention so that Unreal Engine 4 understands how to associate these to the actual tree itself when you bring them in. So specifically for Unreal Engine 4, the way the naming convention goes for your collision boxes is you have your tree here. So if we actually check our object data right here, we see that the tree is named tree with a capital T. So the first thing we want to do is just select one of our collision boxes and it doesn't matter what order you do it in, but I like to keep it in order. And we're going to name this UCX, capital UCX underscore capital T R E E so that we're using the exact same name as our tree underscore zero one. All right. And for simplicity's sake, we'll just copy that. We'll select the second box and paste that name there and it'll be zero two. We'll grab the third box, do the same. And that one will be zero three. Now, if you only had, for example, one collision box for your object, then that collision box would not need the suffix at the end, and it would just be UCX underscore tree. Of course, tree is matching the name of the object you're associating the collision box with, and that's all you would need. But again, we have three, so we need all of them to be named individually with the suffix starting in 01 and continuing on for as many collision boxes as we have for a particular object. And that's all there is to it, guys. That's all you need to create your collision boxes in an external software for the Unreal Engine 4. And again, you may or may not need to do this for many of your objects that you use in the game engine, but in many cases, you will run into a scenario where you may decide that it would be better to have your own custom collision boxes. And this is how you'd go about doing it. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we manually create our LODs in Blender for the Unreal Engine 4. If you appreciate the content, you can help support this channel on patreon.com slash toxicitygamedev. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, there's a lot to come. Peace.